This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Alpine World. This map can be found over at ModdingWealth.com, and when you do go to the download page, linked down in the description below, there will be four additional mods that you will need to download with this map in order to have the map appear exactly how you see it in this video. We're going to cover which ones of those you need to select when we get to the mod selection screen. Now this, at its heart, is an Erlengrot edit, and it is a pretty darn good Erlengrot edit. I have to say, of the multiple Erlengrot edits that I have looked at as of late, this is probably easily in the top two because of the fact that this is the second Erlengrot edit that we have brought to the channel and only bring what I think are quality maps into the channel. So with that, let's just go ahead and go to the mod selection screen. You're going to need to obviously have Alpine World selected. Bavarian Farm Pack and Bavarian Farm Pack 2 are going to be two of the mods that you're going to need to include in your mod folder for this particular map. Bavarian Farm Pack 1 can be downloaded from the Giants Mod Hub, whereas Bavarian Farm Pack 2 and the other two mods are going to be downloaded from ModdingWelt.com. The Farm Garage is going to be another mod that you're going to need to download. And then lastly, there's going to be a small farm silo that you'll need to download from ModdingWelt.com. Now, if you load this map up on Farm Manager or start from scratch, the main farm is exactly how you see it here. So there is no difference with respect to how the farm is set up in any play mode, including all of the equipment is going to be available across all play modes. You see the map loads up error free, warning free, and we are good to roll here. So the loaded place, the starting area is right outside the main gate of our starting farm, which is in the original Erlengrot farm location. The things have been, well, reworked rather substantially. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main PDA. And those who may be familiar with Erlengrot may notice that there is, well, some more land mass than we had in the base game Erlengrot. In fact, I believe before this was kind of where the land ended. But we have four additional fields over here and a fair bit of forest has been added. Forest has been added all over the place. You're going to find that trees are everywhere on this particular map. And it really does feel, in my opinion, a lot better and a lot more fleshed out than the base game Erlengrot did. I understand what Giants had to do. They had to balance game performance on the older platform consoles with the visual appeal of the map. But this one, this one really does hit it out of the park with respect to feeling like it is in an Alpine location. Now we do have all the crop types available to us here on Farm Sim 22. And if we take a look at the lands, you'll see that we start out by owning the main farm area, which includes grass field 45 right above it. We own field 27, 28, 2, 39, 43, and 42. And for some odd reason, we own this giant plot over here just above the, uh, the big hotel. So this plot is 41, almost 42 acres, $254,000. The main farm and field 45 is 16 acres in size, three, $327,000. 24 is 4.59 acres, $92,000. Four acres in size, $80,000, $80, sorry. And field 39 is 2.3, 2.84, 1 1.19 acres, and then 1.48 acres at $30,000. Some other land prices. So we're going to look at this big plot just above the BGA. $265,000 for 43 acres. And then as far as farmland goes, field 14 is 15 acres and is $304,000. Now we have a custom growth schedule here on this particular map. You can see that we have a very, very narrow window to harvest our wheat. Rather long window to harvest our barley, and our canola has been shifted a bit. 
We have the ability to plant in the spring for pretty much all of our crops. And we have the ability to plant in the fall in September and October across for wheat and barley. So that is nice to see that we do have some custom crop growth going on here. There isn't the ability to double crop any of these fields, which means that we do not have a harvest and plant schedule that overlaps to allow you to pull a crop out of the field, plant a crop, and then pull it out of the field in the same year. But at any rate, I do like to see maps where we have a custom growth schedule. If we take a look at our prices screen, you're gonna see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of the base game crops available to us here in Farm Sim 22, including sugar beet cut, as well as sugarcane, even though sugarcane is clearly not gonna be a crop that is gonna be grown in the Alps. We have the ability to sell all of the animal outputs, including silage, hay, straw, and grass. We have two places to buy diesel fuel, and we also can indeed sell every single output that we can produce in the base game production items. So that is also a very good thing to see. We do have two areas to buy bulk lime, and there is a stone crusher on this particular map. Now, if we take a look at our vehicles, all of it is fairly new. Well maintained, none of it is leased. And we do have five animal pins at the start, but we do not own any animals at the start. We do have contracts available, and we do own two greenhouses here on the main farm as far as production owned at the start. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a farm tour here. We have our Erlengrot farmhouse located right here. Now, with respect to the farm, and if you can customize the farm, you can indeed customize the farm. But there is a catch. And the catch is that a lot of this decorative elements, like these barrels, the mower, the hose, the basketball hoop, do not go away when you delete the buildings around them. And what that means is the, the farm, while it can be customized, it's not that convenient. So for example, I can delete this whole shed, this whole workshop, but this concrete here at the washing station remains, the hoses remain, the sink on the wall will remain, although the wall will be gone, and the boxes and the wash tub there will remain. There's no way to get rid of this. I can delete, I can sell the power washer, but I can't delete anything else that you see right here. So that is a little bit of a problem for the player that wishes to change up how things appear. If you don't want this building here, well, all the decorative bits, including the firewood, is going to remain, and then you're gonna have to work around those. So while you can delete the farms, farm buildings, you probably shouldn't because of the way things have been set up. I just wanted to see. I didn't know if that door opened or not. Okay, we've got some of our mowing equipment. The same goes for our farmhouse. We can delete the farmhouse, but all of these decorative bits around the farmhouse, including the fence, for whatever reason, I cannot delete this particular fence. They all remain some of these lights go away. That one remains. This light goes away. All of these tables and such stay. The play equipment stays. That little shed can be deleted, but everything else that you see here, other than the main house, actually remains. You can, and delete, you can delete this particular fence, but you can't delete this particular fence. Kind of an oddity in my books. So we have our two greenhouses located right here. We have a base game cow pasture right here for 45 cattle. Go ahead and get one. And then since this is the base game cattle area, we've got our milk trigger right inside of here. We have our food. 
trough. We have our straw that we can place in here if you push position the blower. Oh, just so correctly. We have our slurry output. We have a slurry storage tank located right here with a dump and fill point. Now, this just says liquid manure tank. I do not think that this is going to be tied into the cow area, but I may be mistaken. But I do not think it's going to be tied into the cow area. We have two silage bunkers located right here for our cattle. Some more sheds. We have a sheep area with our wool point, our food trough, and our buy point for a sheep. 65 sheep in this particular pen. Then right next to a sheep, we have a chicken coop. The chicken coop is going to hold 360 cluck clucks. And then we have our food trough for the chickens. Uh, he's in there. He's in there hiding. A little embarrassed. You call it a cluck cluck, I guess. We have our spawn point for our eggs, as we would expect. And then some more of the base game Herman buildings. Really does work well for this particular area. We have some magical deer that can run through walls. And then we have a big bag of fertilizer and a big bag of seed. Here in the weather stations it's around here somewhere. Now, through here we have the base game, or not the base game, but the modded silo. So we have the dump and fill point right here. Under these neat this little cargo or car covered area. And that overall is kind of the main farm. So let's go ahead and take a look at that starting equipment. We start out with the Steyr 8150 tractor, the John Deere 4755, the Topliner 4090H harvester. That is paired up with the 4090H grain header. Now we got a ton of equipment here. We have the Schaefer 2630 front loader, the EFGS50. Electric forklift. There is an electric vehicle charger in the workshop building. Also, we have the 1986 pickup truck, the Kloss Karat 140 TD trailer, as well as the Welger DK 115 trailers. Got a pair of those. We have the POV 5 XL Agramaz plow, the Sino 4000 Super Amazon cultivator, the Joker 4 CT horse disc harrow. The Amazon KG 3001 Super Power Harrow. Then we have the 3000 and Super Amazon Cedar. We have the Amazon 4500 2C Super Planter. As far as sprayers go, we have the Hardy Mega 1200 L Fertilize Sprayer and Herbicide Sprayer. We have the Amazon ZATS 3200 Fertilize Spreader. And we have the FarmTech 800 Slurry Applicator. We have the Kuhn GMD 4411 side mower and the F240 front mower. We have the GF8712 tether, the Semez Z2840H wind rower, the Impress 125F Pro round baler. We have the Abbey Attachment 1600 water trailer. We have the Albert manure fork and the Quickie Big Bag lifter. We have the Dutzfar 4090 trailer for our header. We have a 600 kilogram weight. And then we have the Brockman MHL, MHAL 4320-35 flatbed trailer. That is our owned equipment. So with that, let's go ahead and get up for the fly around. And we'll take a look around the map. And then we'll come back to the vehicle shop and then get our Mahindra and drive around to all of the various cell points. As I said in the intro, you're gonna find that this map is loaded down with trees. 
far, far more trees than we saw in the base game Erlengrot from Farm Sim 19's Alpine Farming Expansion. We also have several elements that have been brought over from Holt Bay Laroon, like the observatory just off there on the other side of the trees. And then we find a few other buildings off in the distance. It looks like we have the, uh, the castle from Holt Bay Laroon as well. We're going to find some buildings also from Elm Creek scattered around. I'd love to know down in the comments below, what do you think of this rendition of Erlengrot Alpine World? Like I said, I like the massive addition of trees. They really do flush out the map quite substantially. The map border is done fairly well. I don't know if that is kind of an uptick from FS22's base Erlengrot or if that is a carryover. Um, but it does feel a lot better than the map border did in FS 22's or FS 19's Erlengrot. We'll go ahead and swing around this way because we will come back to the vehicle shop. Do have some hot air balloons flying around. We'll pull up the PDA. We'll see where we are with respect to the entire map. We are making our way over to the biogas plant. And the biogas plant has been reworked a little bit, and I like the inclusion of the large contractor building kind of just above the biogas plant here. So if you do want to run kind of a contractor role play here on this map, you could set up shop over there. Let's go ahead and swing back around. Fly over the observatory so with respect to our scoring system let's go back to the main farm and talk about that can the farm be customized yes the farms can be customized you can delete the buildings but a lot of the decorative elements on the farm cannot be removed so I'm gonna give the map a half a point a half a point because there's so many decorative elements on the map that you, on the farm that you cannot remove what it means is that even though you can remove buildings, a lot of them you're pretty much stuck with. And that kind of limits your ability to change the farm around a bit. With respect to, does the map include all of the cell points for all the base crops, animal outputs, and production outputs? Yes, it does indeed. And for that, I'm going to give it a full 1.0 score on that. just want to come down here and just show off this design element. We've got some old trees kind of leaning over here I like to see these types of stylistic elements as opposed to just all perfectly straight up trees but there you can see the Holt Bay Laroon kind of castle off there in the distance I like seeing things like that added to the distance scenery it's just not kind of you know slapstick slap a uh Slap some lipstick on a pig and call her done, if you will, as far as a re-edit goes. So right here, this is where I believe the original landmass ended, where we have this tree line and this road going. So the rest of this has been extended out into the water to give you some additional farmland. Do you like to see that also? With respect to production being built into the map or areas set aside for the placement of such, this map includes 12 different production elements pre-placed on the map as well as the two additional greenhouses. So in total, there are 14 production elements available to us here on this map as far as a player goes. Here we've got the covered bridge from Elm Creek. That has, again, been added to this landmass to let you give you a kind of a second way across this river over to this area of the of the map. We have our animal dealer, and I have to say, I'm not really sure if this building has been reskinned or if this is how the building looked in Erlengrot. I'm kind of getting a little fuzzy with that. Now, there is a little bit of a issue with... 
the trigger marker and the triggers. I'm gonna let it slide, but if we take a look at the F5, okay, we see the trigger is located right here where the logo, where the unload icon is, but the trigger markers are back here. And we kind of had this issue with the base game Erlengrot in 19, the Alpine Farming Expansion version, where the actual unload was not quite in the same spot as the trigger markers were. Really would like to have seen the map author if those trigger markers could be moved to move them up here to where it is properly located, or if they couldn't be moved to actually have put the unload trigger back there so that things were lining up. That is one of the few areas that it feels like the triggers aren't quite lining up. So I don't want to take off any points for just one little specific thing. But uh, I, was, I was close to taking a quarter of a point off on that regard. So here we have our train transfer station to store product here if we wish. Or we can transfer product and then sell it at the off-map train station. We do get a sense of the trees that have been added now when we take a look down the road here, as well as along the train tracks. One of the new cell points, we have a pizzeria right here by the fuel dealership. We then have a really nice worked up little area here. We have the farm, farmer's market cell point, and then some construction going on. We've got a construction crane. And then this building is from Elm Creek. That is up in the kind of the north, um, the northeast of the map. That's been brought over. I think that works well. It doesn't, doesn't really stand out. And this, I don't think I have seen this anywhere. A little skateboarding, uh, half pipe. A cool little, cool little design element to be brought into the map. Now, as we are coming over here closer to... Oh, someone really needs to take care of the street. It's going to fall down into the road if that other tree wasn't there to hold it up. Oh, my goodness. That's a, that's a hazard right there. But when I was talking about the map edge, we are approaching the map edge right now. And I have to say, it is... It's pretty darn good. And I think it's a step up from the Giants map edge myself. I think maybe the map author has placed some real trees just beyond the map border to really give it a sense of depth because guess what? We are at the map edge right now. So when you think about it, you're going to be more in line at like this level when you are playing in third person view. You know, that map border is very, very well hidden. You don't even realize you are literally running right along the map's edge at this point. Right, we're going to make our way over here. There is a secondary dairy farm located right here on the hillside. This farm is not owned at the start, but you can still interact with things. We might as well just touch down here and kind of take a little bit of a look at it and these buildings are part of the Bavarian farm pack one and two that's why you need to include those if you do not download those and include them then I suspect that this area is going to be free and void of these buildings so we have a couple Sheds here, and then we have the cow barn. So we have our milk trigger. We have our cow trigger. 45 cows in this particular building. There's our food dump point. We have our slurry point. And with respect to buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique, 
and 3D look as well as ground textures. Ground textures for sure. We are definitely working those. A lot of the buildings that have come from Elm Creek and Hulk Bay Laroon are definitely using that technique. We racked, we, we knocked down Erlengrad a bit when we did that video because as best I could tell, a lot of those buildings, if not all those buildings, were carried forward with the FS19 texture set. They didn't really have that that new 3D texture going on with respect to the buildings. And this particular pack is kind of the both worlds here. We've got some really old, old texturing going on, like the ground here, the slurry tank wall. And then we have some high-end textures, some more recent textures, like the the stone here at the uh, at the base of the building. The ramp here, really low textures. So it just you get conflicting conflicting information to the eye and it really kind of in my opinion detracts from the overall look and the aesthetic that the map author is trying to cry uh, is trying to create but overall it's a really cool setup i just wish the setup itself was using newer and better textures to kind of sell the whole look Let's go ahead and make our way up here. We have the grape processing facility up here on the hilltop at the extreme southwest of the map. I like the use of these kind of old ruined stair steps here at the entrance. Kind of an interesting little touch. So we have a great processing facility here. And then we'll go ahead and swing across the countryside. I think if anything, maybe some more trees have been added here and there. The more decorative elements have been added here and there. You'll see more and more of those kind of stair steps, ruins, kind of scattered around. We still are not using this big hotel. And I don't know why. It would seem, it seems obvious to me that we should be using this big hotel as a sell point. Maybe to deliver finished goods like chocolates and cheese and uh, and maybe some other things now that we have production but we still aren't using the hotel over here so we have another pizzeria up here on the hill but other than just being a really big decorative element i would like to see more Erlengra edits that make use of the hotel as a sell point for finished goods top quality finished goods you know this place can surely they're making money they can pay a premium for some high quality finished production products then we will end our aerial tour just kind of skimming through town here a lot of the town is original to Erlengrot but there are some distinct changes where production has been added Additional cell points have been added in. We're going to go through all of these in a lot more detail when we do get around to a drive around. We have the cheese factory and the chocolatier still here. So those are embedded in part of the map as far as the production goes. And then we'll go ahead and just land down here at the main shop and do our drive around at the Kloss dealership. We have our dealer icon right here. Let's go ahead and 
get our Mahindra. See where that spawns in. So the vehicle spawn point is still the same as it was with the base game dealership. We have our customized sell, repair, and trade trigger here. But overall, this is a pretty handy, pretty handy setup. We do have the ability to make use of a another forklift down here at the shop. sign all lit up i don't know if that sign was lit up or if it's some metallic going on that looks pretty cool i like that i like it so of course we have our chocolatier located right here we have our dump point we have our interactive icon, and we have our spawn point for the pallets here at the Chocolatier. We're going to see this type of truck scattered around at the various production points. I like seeing something like that. It gives you a little bit of a, you know, more of a sense that the place is alive. Just not a, a building with some triggers. We've got some decorative elements that make sense. We have a second train transfer silo right here so we have our dump point and our fill point and then we can transfer product over to the train to then eventually sell off map now the map author or the map editor i should say of this particular edit has gone in and has added custom signage to all the billboards i think it's a pretty good pretty good nice touch got a nice kind of force say or a uh, Advertisement there of Farm Sim 22. We have Erlengrot X Games. This is kind of fun. The X Games are coming to Erlengrot. Now this has been reworked a fair bit, I believe, from the base game version of the map. We now have a large mill facility. Let's zoom out a little bit and see this. Got kind of this bridge work going on to connect the two buildings across the road. We have our bulk lime buy point. We have our interactive trigger for the mill. We have our dump station, and then we have the spawn point for our flower pallets. Located right there. Right across the street from the big mill, we have the cereal factory and the sugar mill. So we have our dump point, our pallet spawn point, and our interactive icon, because these are just base game factories at this point. Then the sugar mill, we have our pallet spawn point. We have our interactive icon there on the stairs, and then around back, we have our dump station, as we would expect. really see the need to head up the hill to the animal area or the great processing facility we already took a look at those I think we'll just make our way down to the river 
And while we're at it, we might as well drive in cab and just get a nice view of everything here. All the additional trees that have been added. The new land that has been added down here by the water's edge. To really expand the map. Expanded a fair bit, I feel, from how it was in the base game. I do like to see these edits of Erlengrad. Not a lot of people had a chance to play that uh, because it was tied up behind a paid DLC, so it didn't get the exposure that um, Ravenport or Feldsburn did because they were a part of the base game. Those of us who had the paid DLC can often forget about that fact that not everybody had the opportunity to experience Earl of Grot, so now we have a lot of edits coming out. So, in this little area that I pointed out during the flyover, we have the Farmer's Market. Cell point. Nice little bus stop. Little play area there while the kids, while the, you're waiting on the bus. Bus schedule. Look at that. I mean, these are really, really cool details. A fuel station. And another pizzeria cell point. With the dump around the back. train transfer station and as I said the animal dealer is located right here we have the animal trigger up front and then we have the bale cell point around the back we'll make our way back into town and we'll probably conclude over at the biogas plant. So none of these trees were here in the base map. They've all been added and really gives you this almost kind of tunnel view down this road. It makes the road feel a whole lot longer than it is because all you're seeing are this road. Main farm is up there on the hill. I said that's been reworked a little bit. We have the train mill over there to the, the train station over there to the right. We see the chocolatier. Flour mill that we just took a look at is directly in front of us. And be sure to tune in to the Orlengrot X Games. Let's go ahead and wind our way through town at all of the new items that have been added in there. And the first of those is the tailor. So we have the tailor right here. We have the dump. Wish the dump was more in line with the roll gate as opposed to kind of being over there by the trees and, and walkway and such. But we have the dump station or interactive icon there. And our pallet spawn point for the clothing. Oh, I 
was going too fast. What? I'm just speeding. The map has a speed camera. Fun little treat there. We have a carpentry shop. So we have our drop off for our wood, our cell wood trigger. We have our pallet spawn point there on the side for furniture. And our interactive icon at the front door. I can't believe I got caught speeding. We have the pizzeria cell point up on the hill. We saw that in the flyover. I don't think we need to really go and touch on that. The bakery. So we have our interactive icon. We have our dump station and spawn point around back. We have the cheese factory. Located over here. So our dump point, our spawn point for our cheese and our interactive icon located right there. I do you want to see, do wonder, do we have collectibles? We have collectibles. It says we have 12 collectibles, so we should have the cheese wedges. I haven't looked to see where they may be located, but according to the information screen, we do have our cheese wedges. Then coming out of town, we have the rent train marker here at the end of the passenger terminal. And then we have our stone crusher. Oh, I got hit with speeding again. We have our stone crusher located right up here. Kind of at this loading area for the train. And then the last point of interest that we're going to take a look at today is going to be the biogas plant. Located right here. In our entry scale, we have some nice little sheds. We have our dump station for our silage. And our interactive icon. We have our dump station for our slurry and manure and such. And then we have our spawn point for our digestate. We have two three sided bunkers. Located here at the BGA. The triggers work for both of those. And like I said, we have during the fly around this large contractor building up here at the biogas plant. So if you wanted to run kind of a contractor service here on the map, well, you could be staged right here at the biogas plant, maybe even own the biogas plant and run that. So, guys, that is Alpine World. Let's go over the ratings real quick. In fact, let's, let's stop that. Let's talk about the ratings. I need to do a little rundown. Does the map include all of the production built in? Yes, it does. It has 12 production elements built in in the biogas plant, the flour mill, chocolatier, cheese, sawmill, spinnery, the bakery, the carpentry, grapes, sugar, cereal, tailor, and two greenhouses. Then, with respect to, does the map include all of the base game crops, animal outputs, and production elements as sell points? Yes, you can indeed sell pretty much everything that you can make and produce, or grow and produce here on the map, so that is good. Can the farm be customized? Yes and no, the farm can be customized, but there is a whole lot of decorative elements that remain. So I'm gonna give it a half a point with regard to that. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texture technique. Yes, we do have a lot of buildings that have been brought over from Elm Creek and Holt Bay of the Rune to add to the buildings that are here on Erlengrat. Erlengrat as a whole 
got a little bit of a, a notch taken on it because a lot of these base Erlengrot buildings did not have what I felt as making use of the new textures. Um, and that's kind of counterbalanced by the addition of the new buildings. But then the dairy farm over there is kind of flipped again where we have some really, really old textures right there. So we're going to give a half a point in that regard. And then our player inter interactive areas clearly marked. Yes, they are indeed clearly marked. Here we've got another cow area. Didn't see that during the fly around. So we have three cow areas, 15 in this one. And think about that. I don't think we, I don't think we really found the sawmill, did we? It's probably down here. It's probably down here. Let's go look before we close out. So overall, we're gonna give this map a four out of five. So we lost a half a point on the customization of the farms. We lost a half a point on the building textures. So ultimately we have a four out of five. Again, remember this rating system is not how nice the map is. It's not how much I like the map. It is 100% about gameplay and taking advantage of the features that are available in FS22. So we have our fill point for our wood chips, our cell point and our dump station for our logs and our interactive icon there. We have our spawn point for our plank pallets and then our additional lime cell point. So guys, let me know down in the description below, what do you think of Alpine World? Again, you can find this map over at moddingwealth.com. When you do download the map, there will be four mods that you will also need to acquire. Three of them can be found over at moddingwealth.com also, whereas one of them is going to be linked from the Giants Mod Hub. And until next time, happy farming.